Niall, it's one of the biggest challenges when working with prospective reverse mortgage borrowers today. And while denial tends to manifest itself more prominently in those who have little financial assets, like the needs-based borrower, it can also apply to the more affluent. Denial creates an alternate reality for needs-based homeowners with statements like this, we'll be just fine, or we'll find a way to increase our income when we retire. For the more affluent individual, it may appear in statements similar to this, our portfolio, it'll keep growing to give us enough money to live on the rest of our lives. Really? Now, denial serves a dual purpose, to avoid discomfort and accountability. No one likes to admit that their previous spending and saving habits have led to a retirement crisis. Savers don't like to accept the fact that their investments may never grow enough to sustain the withdrawals that they need each year to maintain their standard of living in retirement. Now, denial always exacts its price. Stress, fear, and lack. It stems not so much from logical or willful choices, but from unconscious beliefs and habit patterns. So what are our choices? Ignore the proverbial elephant in the room or pretend their financial situation is fine. Now, bluntly confronting their real issue, not so good. So how do we tread lightly, yet help affect positive change? First, outright challenging one's long-held beliefs will get you nowhere. It's the same thing as saying you're wrong, and who likes to hear that? Second, learn to connect the dots. Interview your prospective borrowers thoroughly and uncover their current debts, assets, cash flow, and expenses. Now from this, you can connect the dots, showing them how the reverse mortgage can help by possibly eliminating mortgage, credit card, and other debt service payments. Third, enlist help. Now, if you're working with a financial advisor, let them address their client's retirement challenges. And this is where you need to be very careful and tread lightly so you don't overstep your role. Fourth, ask what if questions. Here's one. If you predecease your wife, would she be able to maintain a reasonable standard of living, losing the income from the smaller of your social security payments? Now that question many seniors overlook, and it's a fact that upon the death of one spouse, the survivor only receives the equivalent of the larger social security check, and that could be devastating. And it is a strong argument for a Heckam line of credit. Fifth, if they do it, it's true. Now while you can use a spreadsheet to demonstrate the before and after effects of a reverse, try this instead, let them do it. Have them write on a sheet of paper their current monthly debt payments, then on the next column, have them list their monthly payments after they get a reverse mortgage. Now, if you're eliminating a monthly principal and interest mortgage payment and also some credit card debt, the results will impress. Take the difference in monthly payments after the reverse mortgage and multiply it by 12 and tell them this is how much you're gonna keep in your pocket each year to improve your standard of living, fund healthcare expenses, or other needs and wants. Now, denial, it's part of the human experience. Recognizing and addressing it in both ourselves and others is the first step to personal and professional success. Share your thoughts in the comment section below and have a great weekend.